This is the 5M Master Series and I'm Charles Hacks. Welcome back to another video, everyone. And today we are going to be talking about useful features in 5M's Lua runtime that you might not know existed. So you're probably already familiar with a number of 5M's extensions to Lua. For example, vector types are something that normally don't exist in Lua, but do in 5M's version of Lua. So that's your like vector three values. And there are a number of these extensions or patches to Lua that are available in 5M. Some of them that I think are underutilized and underappreciated. And honestly, I'm even guilty of it myself. So today I wanted to take some time and talk about some of my favorite power patches to the 5M or to the Lua runtime in 5M. And the first one we're going to talk about today is compound operators. So I'm sure you're aware of your normal operators in Lua, right? So if we have a, uh, a variable called n that's equal to five, we can say n is equal to n plus three. And if we print this value out, you'll see that we get eight. And of course we su could subtract as well, right? So n equals n minus three, we're going to get two back. But this can get a little repetitive and a little hairy when we're doing this frequently. And so we actually have a plus equals and a minus equals compound operator available to us. So instead of saying n is equal to n plus three, all we need to do is say n plus equals three. And if we get rid of this old line and run this, you'll see we get eight like we expect and minus equals is available as well. And we get two like we expect and multiplication is also available along with division and a number of other options. So you can see how this, it's, you know, it's just a couple characters, but it makes things more readable. It simplifies things. And when you have a lot of these operations going on, these compound operators are really useful. And there's quite a few more that I haven't covered here. If you want to see the full list of compound operators and all of the power patches available in 5M's Lua Runtime, I'll have a link to the GitHub repo and the specific branch you need to be looking at down below where you can see all of these power patches and more. And the next one that I want to talk about is safe navigation, which is more useful than you might imagine. So let's say we have a table. We'll just assign it to a variable called T. And in here we have foo, which is also a table and bar, which is going to be equal to baz. And we want to access bar and get baz back. So we do print, you know, t.foo.bar. And if we run this, we see we get baz back. And if bar doesn't exist for some reason, Lua will helpfully just give us a nil back, which makes sense. But what happens if foo doesn't exist? Well, when foo doesn't exist, we get a script error back because it's attempting to index a nil value. So a lot of times what I'll see, and when I say what I'll see, I I'm guilty of this too. I really need to make a habit of using this feature more. But a lot of times what I'll see and what I'll do is say something like if not t.foo, then, uh, you know, like print, let's just say nothing here so we can see the difference and then return early. And if we do this, you see we get nothing here. If we bring this back, we get our value. But you know, having this whole if statement is uh, unreadable and a little messy and just more logic that you have to follow. So we can actually use safe navigation to accomplish the same thing. If I add a question mark right before, or right after foo and right before the period, this will suppress any errors accessing foo and just return a nil value. So with everything in kind of a healthy good state and we run this, we get baz, but let's say we take foo away, you see now we get nil. And you can do the same thing on the variable, the table itself. So if we take this whole thing away, right now we're getting our script error, but if we add a question mark right after the T, you see we get nil back. So this simplifies your code a ton, makes things a little bit more resilient and safe against errors, as long as of course you're handling nil values correctly. So safe navigation, a really big win and something that is incredibly useful to have in your tool belt. And with safe navigation out of the way, there's a lot of things with table unpacking that work well or are kind of annoying. So I'll give you an example of something that I find myself doing a lot and there is a better way to do it. So let's say I have a table here uh, and we have foo equal to bar and baz equal to bat. And let's say I need foo and baz as just local variables for me to manipulate or just for readability, whatever I'm doing with them. You know, I'll do something like local foo is equal to t.foo, local baz is equal to t.baz. And if we print these out, we get what we expect. But this can get really hairy, especially if you're doing this a lot. And so you can simplify this. You can do something like local foo comma baz is equal to t.foo comma t.baz. And if we run this, it's going to give you what you expect, but there is an even easier way to do this. So assuming our variables are going to be named the same thing that the keys in our table are, 
All we have to do is say local foo comma baz nt. And this will unpack this table and give us these variables back. And we get exactly what we expected in our terminal. And so you can see how we simplified this from two variable assignments in two lines of code down to the same thing in one line of code to something that is much more simple. And so this form of table unpacking can really, even though there's not a functional difference in any of these three options, this can really clean up your code and make things more readable. And now let's talk about a string feature that I find really useful. So a lot of times I will have a table that contains a couple words that I need to concatenate or you know combine with commas or something like that. So I'll just assign a variable called words here. We'll just make this a table with our favorites foobar, baz, and bat. And a lot of times I'll have a need to get this back into a string that's something like foobar, baz, bat, like that with commas and spaces between each one. And this can be a little bit of a pain in the ass, but the string join feature makes it very, very easy. So what I'll do is uh, we'll just assign this to a variable called result and we'll use string.strjoin. And the first parameter we pass here is going to be our delimiter. And in my case, I'm going to use a comma and then a space. And then every parameter after this will be all of the words that we want to join together. And so since we have these in a table, we can just use table.unpack and pass in our words and that should work out well for us. And then if we print this result, you can see we get a string back with all of our words separated by commas. And maybe we wanted to combine these with pipes. You can do that as well, or anything that you can think of. So I find this really useful in a number of cases. A good example of that is notifications. Sometimes if I need to list multiple things that I have stored in a table like this, and I just need to comma separate them, this is a great way to do that. And this is just a small dive into some of the features that I think are going to be most valuable and most impactful for you right now. But there are, like I mentioned, a ton of features in 5M's Lua runtime that you might not be aware of. You know, we have quaternion features and matrices and more table features and a, a huge number of things that you may or may not find useful in your day-to-day -day development. So definitely be sure to check out that link down below to this GitHub repo where you can see all of the power patches and other features that are available in the 5M Lua runtime. And with that, I think we're going to wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and bell icons down below. Leave a comment. Let me know if you learned something. Which one of these features are you most excited to start using? And of course, be sure to join the Discord as well. There's a ton of helpful people in there. Myself and quite a few other members are always around, always happy to help. Definitely a great place to be. And some final news before I sign off. I'm also trying to get a bit more active on Twitter. I can't make any guarantees how active I will be, but there's a link to that down in the description as well. Be sure to throw me a follow there. I'll be posting GTA news, 5M news, and of course, other tidbits about my videos and 5M development in general. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.